Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. It's just a single repot this time round. I brought the camera back round this way because I had some complaints. People said, you've got the camera pointing at a brick wall instead of at the bird feeders. <laughs> so if you get bored with the repotting, there might be some activity on the bird feeder to watch. Now this is a Zygo. Um, it's, it's heavy on ho cocoa husk that's been in there a while. That's its only real reason for getting a repot. Plus it needs to tidy up. Um, so we'll get it out and see what we're dealing with. Ugh. large chunk of dark in the bottom, which I will rescue. I know it might seem a bit excessive to sort of uh, you reuse old bark, but this, this bark is rock hard and I can't get it again. It, it's, um, it was a one-off. And all I do is I just I just put it in some uh, boiling water, just boil it for a while, and, um, and then just dry it off and put it back in a in a separate bag. Now, being a zygo, in theory, I should go very very careful with these roots. But if I want to get this media out, then I've got to get it out. You know, it's, it's got to be done. And I'm trying to be relatively gentle, but. Um, not very successful really. It's all very well saying be very gentle with the roots, but um, you know, it's the old media's got to come out. Luckily there are a lot of roots. Now quite a few of these roots are dead, but there's still quite a lot of pretty good roots here. Only it wasn't so matted. I don't even know what we've got as far as the plant is concerned here. We've got one, two pieces. It's branched, a uh, new growth there that failed. Well, oh, mind you, that could have been a flower spike. <laughs> Can't even remember which one this is. I've got a feeling this is the pale colored one. Um, you know, the one with the sort of uh, pastel shades. Most of what's left is roots. Um, the roots in the center are dead. So where's my scissors? So let's start getting those out of the way so we can see what we're doing here. to uh, take off here, yeah. take too much off. And there again, there's no point in putting dead ones back in. Hang on, that's the hydrofogger. Let me just turn that off or my legs will be soaking wet in no time. I'm stood right in front of it. <laughs> I can go back on in a minute. I'll stay on for a bit longer because it's been off. Obviously the humidity will drop down a bit, but I'm not going to be long with this one. Right, I don't think I'm going to do much more. I'm hoping that there'll be some um, regrowth, some new activity from these roots. Um, right, now the plant. So sheaths first and dead bits. This is a dead bit so that can come off. 
There's a dead bit there. That can come off. Flower spike, you can come off. Another flower spike. <laughs> moment I've got no new growths showing um, but the date on this repot really does dictate that's the most important thing is uh, getting that cocoa husk out I mean it did, it did its job this plant grew very well in it um, and if I put it back in some fresh stuff it would probably do very well again but to get fresh stuff I've got to soak the flipping stuff for you know, sort of overnight, rinse it, soak it again. I've got to do that three times. The amount of water it uses is ridiculous. Um, so, you know, the preparation on it alone is enough for me to drop the flipping stuff. And you can't not do that. It's full of flipping salt. So you've got to do that. Right, I do believe that is two plants. There, there's the split. Right, so we've got a little plant there with a the new growth. Let's see if we can get that one going. Not brilliant roots, but uh, let's see what we can do. Right, so that's one piece. And that's, that's a small division now. That's, you know, a sunken bulb. Um, which won't matter too much because of what it's going to go in and a new growth hopefully that will continue to grow so that's that piece now we've got a piece here that's branched um, it's also it's got a big fat bulb there that's providing storage for the plant but unfortunately the latest growth here is climbing and the new roots are well above where the media was I think I'm just going to take that off is that bit worth keeping? It hasn't got a new sign of, no. No, we'll go back to that. As I said, we'll start it again. See if we can grow it on, get it back to blooming size. But the most important thing to get it back to blooming size is to get some new roots going. Obviously we've got new growth here. So hopefully we'll get some new roots. Oh, I've got some right manky ones there. That's the oldest part of the plant, obviously. Now, it doesn't leave much. But let's hope what's there will grow on. That won't. That's for sure. That doesn't leave much. But we'll see what it can do. Right, so that's my rubbish. Um, now, I'm going to try and repot this without a break. It's just a matter of how I got a reasonable pot down here that's not too dirty. It only needs a small pot. This one's got holes in. Will both those bits go in there? Yes, they will. Right. Now, the only thing I'm, I need to do now is because I'm going to use some um, sphagnum moss, I need to get that moss soaked. Um, it doesn't take long. You know, I don't worry about, you know, <laughs> having to do it half an hour before. It doesn't take long at all. Do get some straggly bits in it sometimes, but... Uh, so we get that into soak. I brought some water in, RO water. We get that going. To say it doesn't take long. Once it's wet, it will then really soak the water up. If you just float it on the top of the water dry, it can take quite a long time before it wicks up through when it's dry, not when it's wet. But as you can see, that's now dripping wet and I haven't got Anything to dry my hands on. Yes, I have my jeans. <laughs> I'll be putting a clean pair on to go to Wisley. I won't use me manky old ones. Right, so we've got some moss. We need some small bark. We need some perlite and some moss. It's going in the, um, effectively, it's going in the um, odontoglossum mix because this is the mix I'm using for the odonts. It's um, based on what they use at Mathers for those types of plants. 
they're using a very similar mix for their Miltoniopsis as well. So, uh, you know, that, that's what it's getting. Now I'm not going to put crocking in the bottom here because I'm going to plant these bits quite deep. So they'll be down near the bottom of the pot. And then we'll see what happens. I need more moss, that's not enough. Not a lot more, but some more. Oops, straggly bit. Doesn't matter if you leave those bits, really doesn't. <laughs> See what that looks like. That's better. It wasn't heavy enough on the moss. Now by switching back to this moss I'm obviously taking it on myself to repot more often and the chances are where I'm using this mix I may well be repotting every year. It might be that frequent but I don't mind. I've got less orchids to muck about with nowadays than what I used to have. Right so We'll put a bit with the moss in underneath the plant, so it's got something to go into. Now we've got two plants with two new growths, like that. Just if you if your roots don't seem to want to go in very easily, twist your plant, just turn it, and then that hopefully will get them in without them breaking. And then this just gets folded in on top of the roots. Gently press down, no heavy stuff, just gent gentle, fold it in down the edge. And as long as it's, as long as it's uh, firm enough for the um, plant to stand up, that, that's all it needs, that's all it's going to get. Gently fold it in down the side. Have a quick check in the pot to make sure you've got no huge gaps, which I haven't. And the moss is quite tidy at the top, I ended up quite tidy, I haven't really got a tidy yet. And that's it. Now the moss is wet, the bark's dry. So for today that doesn't need watering, but tomorrow it will. Because the bark will have taken the moisture out of that moss, so we will put it back in again. So let's see what that does. Let's just see what that does. Now I'll put the tag back in, even though it just says I go hybrid. Because it's not my tag, it tells me which one it is. <laughs> Otherwise, I've got two that just say Zygo Bedlam Hybrid. Um, but uh, we'll see what happens. So, yeah, quick repot for that one. And um, we'll see how it does. Uh, as I said, this was, bought, um, this was bought as a strange... I think this is the one. I might be getting in a muddle. But this story, I think, goes with this plant. I got it at Burnham's not really liking the colour of the um, blooms themselves, but I bought it because it wasn't a good plant. And I thought, well, let's, let's see if we can bring a zygo back from, you know, having poor roots, not very good, old media, you know, and let's see if we can bring it back and get it to grow, which it did. Um, but now it needs revitalising. It needs these two growths to push on, they're not going to bloom. I can quite safely say that because the spikes would already show. It's highly unlikely these two are going to bloom. But what I hope they will do, given that they've got a bit of backup, is produce a new root system, get some strength back in to the plant, and the next growths should bloom. That's the theory. The next growths should bloom. I'm just going to push the whole plant back and bring some of the media back around there because that new growth was a bit too close to the edge. So we've just moved it. Now it's got room for another bulb to grow. Right, so that did squash obviously the media in the back a little bit more. And the only other thing I'm going to do, I'm not accepting this anymore. Is that on camera? Yes. Where I see dye back on leaves, I'm taking it off because I don't believe it does any good staying there. It's not green. And if it is anything a bit iffy, then it's liable to spread, isn't it? So, uh, yeah. So that hopefully will now grow on. We will see. Right, see you next time. Thanks for dropping by. Oh, I will say now, um, I should have been repotting my giant Deshojo maple today. 
and I went and had a look at it. It's been raining, it's soaking wet. I've got a job to lift it. It won't fit in here. So how am I gonna repot it? I can't get the pot in here, it's that big. It's unwieldy, I can't do it. It needs doing on an outside table where any dirt and muck that falls off doesn't go all over my grow room. It just goes on the patio and can be swept up. So I'm looking out for a garden table you know, that I can do my big repots on. Now my smaller bonsai pots I can still do in here. That will be okay, but when you get to those larger ones like that, the mess in here would be incredible. It would be all down behind the bench, all over the floor and the shelves, you know. It's just, I can't be doing with that in here. So it needs doing outside, which is where that sort of thing should be done anyway. So it's on hold. And it might even mean, sad though it is, that it doesn't actually get repotted this year. Now that's not going to kill the tree. What it will do is possibly stop it growing as well as it would have done. But it's not going to die as a consequence of not repotting. It just won't grow as well. The roots are tired and compacted and, you know, it's not so much air in the media. It's all squashed down and everything. But uh, it might mean that because the buds are starting to move. There's a point beyond where repotting starts getting a little bit dangerous, um, you know, because you weaken the tree by disturbing the roots that much. Um, but we, we will see. It depends how quickly I can find a used garden table that's close enough to go and collect, you know. As such, yet, I have yet to find one. Um, I found a perfect one. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was too far away to go and collect. So, uh, right, <coughs> so that'll do. And, um, oh, I know it's on the end again, on the end. Sticking things on the end is not ideal because not everybody stays to the end. Uh, really important stuff ought to go on the beginning. But um, I thanked the person for giving me a donation to enable me to go to Wisley without worry about worrying about the cost of getting in. And since then, two more people have made donations, including one absolutely massive one. The idea being that I come back with some new orchids. Several new orchids. So again, thanks for those people that have used the Buy Me A Coffee to make my day out at Wisley worry-free. It's going to be a pleasant day out, not having to worry about the costs and everything because that's a constant thing unfortunately it's just you keep worrying about how much stuff costs but for that day out I won't have to and that, that's going to be a real pleasure so thanks a bunch for the people that have done that most appreciated most generous as well so uh, thanks a bunch and uh, I'll see you next time thanks for dropping by